Hi guys, welcome back to another video of me teaching. And today I have this question for you guys. So it says, for every positive integer n, proof tangent something times tangent blah, 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 is equal to square root of 2n plus 1. But this is hard, isn't it? Bunch of things multiplied together, and we have to prove it's equal to such a simple expression. So, if we think this is a bit too complicated, then why don't we just make it simpler? So, how do we make it simpler? Well, can't we just make n a bit smaller, like 1 or 2? Yes, but there's a problem. If we let n to be 1, then, of course, it's going to be super simple. But the problem is that, if n is equal to 1, there's only going to be 1 tangent. If n is equal to 2, there's going to be 2 tangents. And if there's only one tangent, then there's no multiplication. So how do we prove that one term is equal to something and prove that something times something times something is equal to some expression? Well, we can't. So the lowest possible n we can make to make this super simple is 2. Because then at least we have multiplication and it's relatively simple. Okay, so... When we see something times something equals something, what does that remind you of? Well, polynomials, right? And in our case, a quadratic equation. For example, if n was equal to 3, then we will think of a polynomial of degree 3. Okay? So, if n is equal to 2, then the bottom is 5. And we have to prove it's equal to square root of 5. And this proof is actually going to include complex numbers. Raise cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of 5. Right? So, if we expand this using the Morvis theorem, we will get cosine of 5 theta plus i sine of 5 theta. And if we expand this using the binomial expansion, then we will get OK. This will be equal to, well, the first term will be C50 of cosine to the power of 5 theta. And of course, everyone knows C50 is just 1. So it will just be cosine 5 theta. Okay, then what do we do? Well, we add C51 of this raised to the power of 4 plus this raised to the power of 1. And the term is, of course, positive. So just copy it. Cosine to the power of 4. Sine 1 times i. Okay? Now, the next term. It will be cosine cubed theta plus this squared. And i squared is negative 1. So the next term will be minus the coefficient c52 and the, and the inside which is cosine 3 sine squared. Then, we see the next one. It'll be i cubed. What's i cubed? i squared times i, which is negative i. So the next term is still negative. The coefficient c53 and the inside, which is cosine squared theta sine cubed of theta. And don't forget the i. Okay, and then let's see. The next one will be i to the power 4, which is i squared times i squared, which is 1. So it will be positive. The coefficient c54 and the inside cosine theta times sine to the power 4 theta. No i, just 1. And then our last term is well, this will be i to the power 5 which is i to the power 4 times i, which is just i. So we add c55, which is 1. So c55 is 1 times sine to the power of 5 theta times i. Okay? So now, like I said before, we can solve for sine of 5 theta by just collecting all of the imaginary terms. So if we just collect... This is an imaginary term. And of course, don't forget the signs. This is an imaginary term. 
and of course this is an imaginary term. So we can see that now sine of 5 theta will be this then minus then we add okay so since this is an identity then we know for all values of theta this is a true equation which means that this is equal to this well what is one thing that all polynomials have in common well one side of, of is course zero so which side do you want to be zero of course this side so what would you want to let theta to be well of course on the bottom it has to be five but one to the top any form of something times pi so we can just let that be k pi but in our case k can only be one or two because n is restricted only up to two because we have made it super simple so now we can make our quadratic equation because now this is zero and I will do some manipulating to this to make it into a quadratic equation. So we'll get, I'll write this is equal to zero. Is equal to zero. So now I can rub this out. Well, if you've seen some of my previous videos, then you know that we are experts at changing some sine and cosine into tangent and cotangent. Well, in, the, in our case, we want it to be tangent, but it's completely fine if it's cotangent. It's just one reciprocal away. We're going to divide sine to the power of 5 theta to both sides. So then we'll get, we keep the coefficient C51 times so over sine to the power of five theta will be one over sine to the power of four so cosine over sine is cotangent raised to the power of four same logic we minus c53 of cotangent squared and then we add one goes to zero so now we can do a simple let so if we just let cotangent squared of theta to be x then we see we have made our quadratic equation so we have c51 times x squared minus c53 of x plus 1 is equal to 0. so now we know that this quadratic equation has two roots so we can see that x is equal to well x is equal to cotangent squared of theta right and theta is equal to this so the two roots are x is equal to cotangent squared of the first theta is of course plug in one pi over five and the second one is cotangent squared of plug in two two pi over five okay so now how do we calculate the product of these two roots well, like i said since these are roots of the equation of this quadratic, then we can use Vieta's formula to calculate the product of these two roots. So cotangent squared of pi over 5 times cotangent squared of 2 pi over 5 will just be using Vieta's formula C over A, which is 1 over 5. So this will be equal to 1 over 5. Now, like I said, cotangent and tangent are just one reciprocal away. So if we take the reciprocal on both sides, then we'll get tangent squared of pi over 5 times tangent squared of 2 pi over 5 being equal to 5. Now, we want normal tangent. So if we just take the square root on both sides, this going, this going, and the right hand side will just be square root of 5. And look, we have proved it. Because we have proved that tangent of pi over 5 times tangent of 2 pi over 5 is equal to square root of 5.
So now, this gives us inspiration of what to do to solve the real problem, the hard problem. So let's work on our roadmap again. We're going to do the exact same thing we did here. So let's, in summary, what we're going to do for this problem. Well, first, we're going to take the binomial expansion and the Morva theorem expansion of cosine theta plus i sine of theta of to the power of 2n plus 1. Then we are going to clean everything up, find the imaginary part to figure out sine of 2n plus 1 times theta. C 2n plus 1, 1 cosine 2n theta sine theta. Then we subtract C 2n plus 1, 3 of cosine 2n minus 2 theta sine cubed theta. And then we add dot 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 until the last term will be i to the power of 2n plus 1, since we don't know what the sign is, then it will be c of 2n plus 1, 2n plus 1 is just 1, and the integrand will just be sine of 2n plus 1 theta. Okay, so now we're first going to figure out what this is. So this implies, or smiley face, we know i of 2n plus 1 is just i of 2n, times i, right, which is i squared to the power of n times i, right? And this is equal to, well, i squared is negative 1. So negative 1 to the power of n times i. And this i is super easy to clear away. We can just multiply the i over here. So all is left is just negative 1 to the power of n. So we can just replace this now with negative 1 to the power of n. And we see we have an i here. Well, we're trying to find the imaginary part of the whole thing. We can just ignore this i, exclude it. So we can just get him out of here. So now we have this expression. So now what do we do? Recall. So we need to make this to be 0 because we want a polynomial equation, right? So how do we make this p0? Well, of course, we can just let theta, I'm gonna write it down here, theta to b. Well, of course, the bottom has to be 2n plus one, of course, and the top will be k pi, and now k can go all the way up to n, right? So. Now I'm going to rewrite this so that all of this is equal to zero. Equals to zero. So now, of course, we want to try and make all of this into cotangent. And we do the exact same method we did. So then we'll get, we keep the coefficient, but then this will just be cotangent 2n of theta, same logic, minus c 2n plus 1, 3, cotangent of 2n minus 2 theta, plus all the way to, since this is just 1, we just have negative 1 to the power of n is equal to 0. So now we can do our little let. So if we just let cotangent squared of theta be x, then we see this becomes a polynomial of degree n polynomial. So I'm going to rewrite this up here. So we get c of 2n plus 1, 1. And then this is just x to the power of n, then minus c 2n plus 1, 3 x to the power of n minus 1, and we add all the way to negative 1 to the power of n, and this is equal to 0. So, since we let cotangent squared of theta be x, then of course, we have n roots of this polynomial. So we have x be equal to 
cosine squared of theta and theta are all of these and there are n of these. So the first one will be cotangent squared of, of course, we plug in k is equal to 1, normal pi over 2n plus 1, or cotangent squared of, plug in 2, 2 pi over 2n plus 1, and all the way to cotangent squared of n pi over 2n plus 1. Right? Okay. So now what do we do? Well, there's one problem. What about the signs? How do we know if it's positive or negative when we use Vieta's formula? Well, first of all, I can clear out this board. And then I'll explain to you why you don't need to worry at all. Because using Vieta's formula, coincidentally, if we just exclude this first term because it's already positive, then with Vieta's formula, starting from this term, then you can test this out by yourselves. But Vieta's formula, if we use this term, will be negative c over a, or in our case, something over something. So it will be negative of something, and negative and negative make positive. And the next term, which will be positive already, the Vieta's formula will be positive. So it will still be positive. The next one negative, Vieta's formula negative becomes positive. So everything cancels out to positive. So we don't need to worry about negative 1 to the power of n, stuff like that. It's just positive. Or, in other words, you could just say it's just 1. So now, if we use Vieta's formula, we multiply all of these together. So we have cotangent squared of pi of 2n plus 1. And I won't write this. I'll just write dot, dot, dot. Cotangent squared of n pi over 2n plus 1 would just be, of course, we said that since they're all positive, then the top would just be 1. And the bottom, of course, 2n plus 1. So if we take the reciprocal, then we have tangent squared of pi over 2n plus 1 times dot 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 tangent squared of n pi over 2n plus 1 would be equal to 2n plus 1. So now if we take the square root on both sides, then we have tangent times tangent times tangent all the way to here will be square root of 2n plus 1. And that is exactly what we have here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoy my video and you like more and you want more videos like this, please consider liking and subscribing. If you want to master something, teach it.